Welcome back. It is 831 on your Saturday. I'm Josh Robertson. Let's get over to meteorologist Hannah Garb with another look at your weather authority forecast. Thanks, Josh. We still have a cloudy start out there, but the rain has kind of tapered off. We had that lingering light rainfall early this morning that we saw most of yesterday. Now it's pushing to the south along a cold front that's moving through. You can even make out a little bit of a line there in the clouds. That's the cold front that's moving all of that rain now to the south. So I think it is going to start to clear up and dry up a little bit here. But because we still have this southwest moisture stream in those upper level clouds, we could still see some sprinkles later today, but it's not going to be the more heavier persistent drizzle that we've had. And those really chilly temperatures are now sinking in. You can see just how much colder it is across the region. And now we're starting to see our temperatures falling as that cold front moves through. And the water vapor you can see in these smoother areas where that low is now dropping down to the south. It's digging past Denver. This is unloading all of that Arctic air out of Canada. But we're keeping the cloud cover at least through the afternoon today because there's also another low right here. It's kind of cut off from the main jet stream and it's bringing in this tropical moisture from the Pacific that's causing the cloud cover and the rain right now. That's why I think we can't rule out some showers because we're still seeing some moisture there. And you can see it on the model. It keeps some of these pops of green in there through the evening. But for the most part, the rain has now moved offshore. It's going to be really chilly in the morning hours. We'll see clearer skies. This will be true tomorrow morning and Monday morning. And that could cause really cold temperatures for our morning lows. So it's going to be windy behind this front. The wind chills are going to be chilly and we'll have morning 30s across the area. So the winds have already started to pick up. We'll continue to see them be very gusty through the evening tonight. Then we'll see a change in that wind direction from the northeast late tonight into early tomorrow morning and they'll start to taper off a bit. But even tomorrow we're still going to have a pretty persistent cool breeze coming from the north that will make it feel chillier. Our high today, I'm putting 48. This will give you a better idea of what it's going to feel like through the afternoon. Our technical high was this morning in the 60s, but now that those temperatures are falling, it's just going to get cooler. Most of the area will be in the 40s. This is showing 50s because I think we could sit around there just south of the lake as the winds are coming from the north off the waters. Most of our area are going to see 40s as we go through the afternoon. And you can see the wind chills really getting cold behind that front. It'll feel more like low 40s and 30s. This is 11. And by the evening, most of the area will feel like 30s with the wind chills. Tomorrow morning, wind chills on the North Shore and inland areas down to the south will be in the 20s. So you'll need to take out those winter coats if you put those away. Now, north and west of the lake, the next couple of mornings, this I will also include inland areas. Anywhere away from bodies of water is where we could see temperatures right around freezing for tomorrow morning. Then Monday's even colder because the winds will be calmer and we'll see clear skies. So I'm thinking around 30 degrees. And that's anywhere away from the metro that's just south of the lake. I think those are the only places that will stay a little bit higher. That's why I have 38 for Sunday and Monday on the south shore. And again, this is not the entire south shore. This is areas just south of the lake where it's coming off the warmer waters and the winds will be a little bit higher. So freeze precautions for that. Pets, plants, people all protected and indoors the next two evenings. This is going to be a stark difference from where we've been. We were well above normal into Mardi Gras. We had two days slightly below normal, but most of this month we've been kind of right around there. It's not going to last long though. The low moves out. We see high pressure rebuild over Mexico and Texas. That means it's going to warm up in the middle of the week. And then we see our next low pressure system track to the east of us. It's so far east, I'm not convinced we get a lot of moisture out of this. We're also not going to see a really significant drop in temperatures. For Friday, I put 20%. I think there's a chance we see some showers on the back end, but for the most part, we're just going to see a fall from those temperatures in the mid 70s, just down to the low 70s, so much less drastic than what we're seeing today with the falling temperatures. So a reminder once again, Josh, for the North Shore, areas west of the lake, inland areas, which includes Homa, Bell Chase, anything away from the lake on the south shore yeah. is going to get into those low 30s. We'll likely see frost the next two mornings, and if not tomorrow morning, definitely on Monday morning. And this is going to encompass a lot of your weekend. It's going to be cold. Uh, we just saw Dr. Joe Willis out there showing us 
some gardening tips, and he looked cold out there. Yeah, his hat blew off. The yeah, winds it, it, are it, really it, picking up out and there. It, hasn't, it did not feel cold when I left the house, so it's obviously changing dramatically. Yeah, like I said, our high was this morning. It was 60. Now we're going to be plummeting throughout the day. Gotcha. All right, thank you very much there, Hannah. 836 now, a Fox 8 investigation.